All right, does anyone remember any blatantly broken misinterpretations of the rules when they first started playing Magic the Gathering? Like, you know, we all had, like, a different way of looking at the game and understanding how everything's- how everything worked. And there was this fantastic Reddit thread about this. So I was thinking about when we all decided to learn how to play Magic the Gathering and Scouts as something to do at the campsites. I remember the kid who got us all into MTG had this deck that played for, at least, Flash, for Darksteel Colossus. He assured us that that, that is how it worked. Trying to answer an 11-11 on turn 2 was devastating, especially when uh, when I was going to need 7 or more turns to make land drops to cast my Thorn Elemental. I wonder where he is now. He is probably a senator or something. But there are some, like, pretty, like, realistic misinterpretations here. So Dark Ritual. Search your library for three swamps and put them onto the battlefield. I could see that happening. I could definitely see that. It literally says add black, black, black to your mana pool. And if you look up swamp, like, there it is. There's the skull. How, how could, what, what would that, what else would, could that possibly mean? So what else we got here? Uh, my cousin has since has said since it was a mana source, so he could keep it on the battlefield as a permanent and tap it for three black every turn. <laughs> my cousin told me we played mana drop. This was a variant on the rules where you put all your lands into play immediately before the first turn. That's not bad. That actually sounds f fun in some way. But the first time I saw the cards was ancient history. I was in third grade, a friend had fifth edition, but we didn't know the rules. So we didn't play magic. We played war with mana costs. Just a pretty, oh, pretty game of war with much cooler artwork. Me and my friends when learning the rules thought Gruel Guildgate tapped to search for a forest or a mountain and put it onto the battlefield as your land drop. We basically just played until someone found one of their gates. And then, uh, and then that person won. Oh my god. Gruel Guildgate? Would they tapped Gruel Guildgate? This isn't a land, but it's a land that finds the lands. I, oh, I, oh, I get it. So you tap, and you add a red or green. So you go into your deck again, and you look for the forest. You go look for a forest. You look for that mana symbol. I can totally see people, like, misinterpreting it like this. It was, it was always Llanowar Elves fetching for a same thing. Same, same thing. Yeah, tap, add a green. I never thought of it that way. You know, I ne we never made this mistake when I first started playing. James Gilberto says, I used to try and attack an opponent creatures directly with my creatures when I first started. I came from one year of Yu-Gi-Oh. If you came from Hearthstone, you probably would have done the same thing. And you'd be like, I'm, I can't do that? What, I can't attack their Llanowar Elves? What's going on here? Mana Dorks would be so bad if you could do that. Just kill off their Mana Dorks. Hiya. I thought if I destroyed a permanent in response to an ability activation, I would counter the ability. Sometimes losing is the best teacher. If I destroyed a permanent in response to an ability activation... Oh, you mean like anything. You see, if you target that permanent, you would counter the ability. But if it's just any... If it's like any activation, like, hey, tap, add three mana to my mana pool, and if you... In if you're destroying like a random per permanent, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Me and my friends put lands in front like savages, learning from the, se the secrets of fire. Remember when your brother thought lands worked like lotus petals? I don't, because my brother says so much crap. My brother's had so many ideas. I first thought destroy meant ripping the card to shreds. Oh my god! Oh no! You guys are really playing for keeps over there! Good god. Uh, I win this one, I reckon. We basically didn't quite understand the stack, but we knew you could kinda interrupt people's stuff 
and your stuff would happen first. We called it before that happens and just didn't see set any limits on it whatsoever. This led to stuff like I thought sees you. Okay, before that happens, I cast Phage the Untouchable. Okay, before that happens, I kill Phage with Terminate. Okay, before that happens, I equip Lightning Greaves to Phage. Okay, before that happens, I Ancient Grudge your Greaves. Okay, before that happens, I attack with Phage and win. Alright, nice, GG. <laughs> Where's Phage the Untouchable? There it is. Yeah, in response, and then what is it? Whenever Phage deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. Good game, I cast Phage. Well, in response to this, I'll do this. And be well, but in response to that, I'll just attack with Phage, and you die. That seems so fair. I thought bolting blockers would let damage go through. Still think it should. Uh-huh, just like trample. I thought Summoning Sickness only applied to attacking and not tap abilities. Oh, I, I could see that happening. I could totally see that. Yeah, I mean, Magic has a bunch of arbitrary rules that make no sense at all. We just we just live with them. We're, they're institutionalized in us. I was taught to play during Darksteel by jamming to fully powered standard affinity decks against each other to what... It's a, it is a wonder why you st stayed around. Me and my friends thought you got dinged for mana burn for your untapped lands too. What? Then what, you just like take damage no matter what? You're damned if you, oh, I see. So if you, t you have to use your lands every turn if you don't. Oh, that's an, that's an interesting one. You have to use your mana every turn. And if you don't, you have unspent mana or you have lands untapped, you get burned. You get burned. Before that happens, must become a silver border mechanic. Before that, before that happens is a hell hilarious mechanic. I love these threads. I get to tell all sorts of fun stories. When I first started playing over 20 years ago, I was first introduced to the game by the younger brother of a classmate of mine. He taught me how to play, emphasis on quotes, by giving me a pile of his red and black cards while he took all the green, white, and blue cards. Before we even started, he said he got he got to begin the game with an enchantment in play. Not knowing any better, I shrugged and said, sure. So he pulled out Circle of Protection Black. <laughs> what the hell? And began with it in play. Of course, I didn't get that same courtesy, mainly because there were no black or red enchantments in the deck. Seemed a little sus, but whatever. I actually managed to win the game with red creatures and spells since he never drew his Circle of Protection Red. Oh my god. Guy, che guy cheats red-handed as a noob and still loses that's the true sign of a absolute uh, absolute loser all right so the next game he drew he threw in a curveball negative mana you could pull negative mana from an X spell and invert its results so he dome me for a hundred with stream of life that he paid negative a hundred mana for stream of life What the hell is this? X, target player gains X life. So he used this like a one shot bonfire of the damned. I don't remember how he managed to keep himself from dying to mana burn there, but I turned the tables on him the next game thanks to a pair of fireballs. He doesn't talk to me anymore. Yeah. He stacked his own deck against another deck that he made and is still losing. That is pathetic. That is a new low that I've never even heard of before. Flash forward a few years to high school because we only had a half hour for lunch. We played a super abbreviated set of rules where we dubbed school rules. We drew to seven cards every turn and all lands are immediately put onto the battlefield when drawn. When, uh, which can allow for some really explosive terms if you, hit, if you hit a pocket. Since these were massive games with four to six players, they got pretty chaotic. Some of the players would also f frequently start start taking their turns during other players' turns, grand melee style, which caused no end to headaches when something happened that would prevent that player from being able to do what they were planning during their turn. As you can imagine, discard was basically useless in this format. Wow, we should we should bring the we should see at least one commander channel try this. Grand melee commander, where 
Like, anyone can do anything, and until everyone is done their turn, can they reset to a new turn? They just go all out. People are simultaneously casting soul rings and stuff. I don't know. I don't have no idea how the stack will work. No idea how that stack would work. Okay, the stack is different than uh, than changing to an attack phase. Epic fail. Correct. Who else didn't understand regenerate? Um, I understood regenerate up to a point. I mean, I think regen the only part of regenerate I didn't really get was that you had to tap the creature and it removed it from combat. But I understood, like, it's going to protect the creature if it dies. That's basically it. Summoning Sickness gets really confusing, too, when you can't tap land or elves for mana. But you can with Birchlore Rangers. That's right. I still, to this day, people tell me about, like, Earthcraft and Squirrel Nest. Was it Earthcraft, I think? Yeah, tap and untap creature you control, untap target basic land. Like, I get so many comments in my YouTube comments section. Like, you can't tap the creature and, like, untap a basic land. Like, it was supposed to combo with, like, Squirrel Nest. It's supposed to combo with Squirrel Nest. So, like, if you're like, how do you... This is not an infinite combo because the squirrels have summoning sickness. And I'm like, yes, the squirrels do have summoning sickness. But the squirrels don't have the ability. Earthcraft has the ability. And you can just tap anything, even, even creatures that do have summoning sickness. So. Indestructible protects creatures from toughness reduction. Oh, oh you like, like dismember? I could see someone getting confused by that. Chaos Orb has to be tier one, tier one in Grand Melee MTG. Well, you only use it once, right? I like playing uh, EDH where everyone starts with Soul Ring and the mo and the Monarchy in the middle. Screw up the indestructible first strike trample when I started playing magic. Yeah, sorry, sorry, started playing commander. You know, but you still, people still screw up things like trample and death touch and first strike. That's a lethal combination. I thought regenerate meant to put the card into play from the graveyard. You know what? In a way, that's what it's sort. It's not really coming from the graveyard, but I, I imagine that's the flavor. It died, it went to the graveyard, then it's coming back, and it's out of combat, and like it's tapped. I imagine that's what it is. And it's asleep, and it's trying to wake up. Love the times when damage went on the stack, oh god. Man, the rules were so confusing back then. Just stupid confusing. Magic the Smash Bros Gathering Brawl. Gotta love it. The rules insert we used to learn the game didn't mention mana expiring, so we just played as if up upwelling was it always active. Mana pools don't empty until at the end of uh, phases or turns. So they just end of turn, alright, just tap a bunch of mana. Excellent. That's that's how you ramp. Why not? In basically get mana for forever. If double strike kills a creature on f the first strike, the second strike hits your life total. That makes a lot of sense, really. That makes a whole lot of sense. That would make more sense than how the rules are cur uh, are currently. In the preview uh, tournament of the expansion, which double strike appeared, yeah, long ago, I had read the rules about this new ability and played a creature with it. One of my opponents said, I, it cannot strike twice the player. That would be OP. We called the referee who told me I was wrong. I explained to him I was in the FAQ he was supposed to know. Uh, have, but nope. Did not even check. Before smartphones were a thing. Good times. What? Hold on. I had, I had read the rules about this new ability and played a creature with it. What's the, was it, what's the point of double strike? Like, what's the point of double strike if it doesn't du strike you twice? I would I would then ask the judge. So basically, what happened is they had double they had they had a double strike creature, but whenever it attacked a player, it would only deal like 
one shot of damage. Well, wait, then what does this ability do? What, does it do nothing? Is it just there for funsies? Double strike. Thought the normal damage goes to face after being blocked. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. That that would make a lot of sense too. Like you you hit two things. You you hit the creature and you double the damage by hitting the player. You at least block half of it, if you block. I tried to attack with a wall of spears. Was informed walls can't attack and spent the next five minutes reading tiny rule book to find the rule. It had first strike and no one had mentioned walls couldn't attack. So yeah, I was clueless. First time playing 1993, no four of limit, nothing banned or restricted. Far, far less wholesome environment and age than Cub Scouts. But no one tried to flash in an indestructible beat stick without paying nine manas to do so, so I got that going for me. We didn't know there was a one land per turn limit, so when we started during uh, World Wake, green decks were very strong. Uh, Nima Still Lurker was one of the biggest threats we had. Oh god, what, what is this, like some starter pack or something? It's just a 3-5 creature. Changelings are walls too. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess specifically just, the, the, what is it, they had wall of spears. They were attacking with a wall of spears. It's not a bad creature. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, what are you guys' questions? I remember thinking the set symbol had to match the mana symbol to be able to cast a card my f when I got my first pack, which was Homelands. Oh my god. You just made it so much harder for you to cast your spells. So you might as well just play a deck that has only cards from that expansion. I didn't understand Spore Frog originally when I started at age 8. What, sack it and prevent all damage? Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. What's combat damage? Can I prevent all lightning bolt damage? Is that combat damage? After all, they're coming at me. Just use Blasting Stage, Druid's Call, and Scroll Wrangler. Fabio said, We used to combo off on turn one with a Disciple of Vault and two Welding Jars. Of course, Regenerate meant reanimate to us. Ah! So, okay, so you have Disciple. What a combo. You guys are hardcore. Okay, so you have Disciple of the Vault. Whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may have target opponent lose one life. But actually, how did you pull this off? You had to cheat a second time. So you had Welding Jar. So the whole idea is to sack Welding Jars, and then it combos with uh, the Disciple. So if you, you need like three... Don't you need like three of them in play? Because you have to sack a Welding Jar to another Welding Jar to regenerate it. But then that, but the original welding jar died, so it's like, okay, I'm sacking them simultaneously to the, to each other. They both go to the graveyard. Okay, they come back simultaneously. It's the only way I think you could cheat. See, do it. When I first started, fetch lines were terrible. A lot of people do that. They're like, I have to pay life for this. What? That makes no sense. Paying life for. A, for mana? This is terrible. So like, uh, casual players love selling their fetch lands. They don't like the idea of taking damage for any reason. Those life gain players, not they're not going to have anything have anything to do with that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh, hey, shout out to the Scarab God. Ross says, I have a distinct memory of filling out a feedback card about Sylvan Might. Basically saying, hold on, let's look up Sylvan Might. I don't get why you would want to buff up your opponent's creature. I thought target was opponents only. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. I don't get why you would want to buff up your opponent's creature. Oh, I see, I see. Because there was a lot of cards, actually, at the time that's like, target opponent thing, target opponent that. That you can't target your own stuff, so you might have just gotten used to that. And yeah, like, why do I want to buff up my opponent's creatures? 
But maybe in Commander it would make all, it would make sense. I think you cannot regenerate from sacrificing things. Well, of course not. My friend used to win games by casting Arcane Adaptation and naming Drake Dragon, Dragon, and we assumed that gave all his creatures flying. Oh! Arcane Adaptation makes all, like, choose a creature type. Uh, creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to the other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And under that same logic of all the dragons having flying, this should give all my- I should name Merfolk and everything as Island Walk. And plus one plus one. Alright, let's look at more stories. Yeah, we called it Mana Rush since my playgroup was playing primarily at lunchtime or before and after school. It did make the games faster. They're talking about like dumping all their lands on turn one. It seems like a lot of people had a very similar rule. I remember when I first played the Pokemon trading card game with my friends. Like we couldn't stand that one energy per turn rule. So we just like, okay, whatever energy cards are in your hand, just stack it on your creatures and that's it. So we, okay, so I have a lot of... I have a lot of stories with Pokemon that relates to this. Like, we skipped the energy rule. We had, like, we don't need to evolve anything. You just put a Charizard on the battlefield, and there we go. Because otherwise, evolving things was almost impossible. Playing by the rules, real rules really sucked. So I, had, I, I played very similarly like that in the Pokemon trading card game, but not in Magic the Gathering. We're talking about how we interpreted the rules when we first started playing Magic. So that's, the, that's the deal. All right, we called it Mana Rush, and since my group was playing primarily at lunchtime or before and after school, it did make the games faster and more playable. More playable? What the hell? I remember a good number of early kills with Craw Worm because I got a god hand of like six lands and a Craw Worm. The hilarious thing was that none of us built decks with more than 20 lands with them. I remember my friends used to make fun of my rule of thumb, 20 lands. My friends still tried to cheat further on lands, down to 16, 18, struggling for land drops. It was a weird time. This is a funny thing, too, because I hear a lot of people... I had a lot of friends getting into magic that are like, yeah, like, you, the deck only needs 14 to 8, like, something like 15 to 18 lands. And I'm like, is that, was that draft advice? Did you get that from, like, a lim like limited? And, like, whenever we, whenever we would play, they would always get mana screwed. They would constantly get mana screwed and just assume that that was just, they were just getting unlucky. And then until I told them, like, you're not even playing with remotely enough lands. You have 18 lands in your deck. That's nothing in a 60 card deck. And that my, my friends were playing with, like, their curves started at, like, four lands. Oh, we remember mana burn. Absolutely. Henry says, I also didn't understand why the Mox cards were so broken. I remember my dad explaining to me why they were so good, and the whole time he was just, I was just like thinking rather than a, rather a basic land. I was just, I was just thinking rather play a basic land, of course. And it's so much cheaper, isn't it? Basic lands are so much cheaper. Okay, the original browbeat confused me so much, I then noticed that the new print had its syntax slightly changed to avoid confusion with browbeat. That's the, uh, I think I know what this card is. Any player may have browbeat deal 5 damage to him or her. If no one does, target player draws 3 cards. Then I noticed that the new print had its syntax, so what's the old one? Unless a player has browbeat deal 5 damage to him or her, him or her. Target player draws three cards. Oh, I see. I well, I could. I'm not exactly sure how you found this confusing, but I could see how this could be confusing. Like, do you target yourself to draw three cards, or are you targeting like if you do you target someone else to draw three cards, and they could take the damage? Friends thought if you forgot to untap, you get mana burn, and of course you cannot untap until next turn. Wow, that is brutal. That is like that is like a whole level of scum at like a Grand Prix, because people have tried to do that. Like, oh, you drew your card for the, like people. You know how people draw their card without untapping their stuff yet? There are so many stories where. Someone drew a card, they didn't untap, and then the opponent's like, no, 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 you floated all your mana, you don't get, you don't get, you don't get nothing. Oh, by the way, you take a bunch of mana burn, or whatever. 
Uh, anyway, that none of that held up in the court of MTG. James Beaton, Haven Gull, Leech, letting me cast creatures at instant speed with Pearless Mirror and Heartless Summoning back in standard. Good god. KBG, all those times you were searching through your library and looking in every book for a mountain or plains in reference to Arid Mesa? Dick. <laughs> A friend used to say he could attack with his walls as long as it had power above zero because it made no sense to him that walls should have power. Here, here, your friend is right. Why should it? I mean, I guess, you know, if it had barbed wire on it, I could see it having a little bit of power. But it would make sense to me. When I started playing with a friend years ago, we thought blocking was also affected by summoning sickness. That, hey, like, that would make a lot of sense to me. It's like, oh, I can't attack this turn? Well, I guess I can't block either, because you're pretty useless. That would make a lot of sense. No, the magic rules don't actually make any sense at all. We just, I mean, that's just the game we play. Mine was book burning. I thought it meant... Uh, unless they literally had it in their hand, it dealt six damage to them plus the six cards into their graveyard. It w I I was like, this card is so good. What is book burning? Unless a player has book burning deal six damage to him or her, put the top six cards of target player's library into his or her graveyard. Unless a player has book burning deal six damage to him or her, put the top six cards of target player's library into their graveyard. Not bad. Two mana deals six damage. I thought it meant unless they literally had it in their hand. Unless the player has book burn. Oh! Okay, so you play book burning, and then like, okay, do you have a book burning in your hand? Because the card says, unless a player has book burning, then deal six damage to them. Wow! I could tot I can totally see this misinterpretation. So, but and then your opponent responds, "No, I got the book burning." And by the way, you just burned your book burning, so my book burning gonna de gonna deal six damage to you. They should have some burn spells like that, unless your opponent has this card. You make the burn match, you make the mirror match really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> unless unless a player has book burning totally funny phasing was annoying I attack with my creature then I play a card to phase them back untapped well that's weird my buddy didn't realize he could play spells or take game actions on an opponent's turn <sighs> yeah that's I mean that's level zero play right just do everything on your first main phase make your attack and then that's it you can't do anything until your next turn <laughs> uh, invisible comma after book burning <laughs> Gustavo says, I took a long time figuring out how phasing worked back when I started. And phasing to, oh, actual phasing, like creatures phase in and out. Yeah, that can be annoying. Luis, can you think of any significant change that can happen now that would be as big as the mana burn removal? Ooh, I don't think mana burn removal was even that big of a deal. A big change, though, could be... Well, you can't remove the beginning of combat step because too many cards trigger at that. I don't know what a big change would be. You know what, maybe we... Mm. Maybe if you can play spells before you, you untap your cards. I don't know. I can't think of what, what much room there is left to change the game without drastically changing cards. Okay, we had a grace period rule for counterspells, which meant whoever wanted to counter a spell could wait until the entire turn played out before choosing what to counter. Oh my god! At which point the turn would rewind and play from a point at which counterspell would have resolved? This made world whirlwind denial absolutely broken, as for three mana you could completely deny an entire turn. What the hell rule is this? For each spell and ability your opponent's control, counter unless it's control of place 4. That person who came up with this rule had one deck. Care to guess what archetype it might have been? You get to, so 
you get to see a whole turn play out and you're like okay we're gonna okay i've seen enough let's go back before you play your mana rock and let's counter that but before you play your soul ring that's what i'm gonna counter <laughs> wow that grace pure thing se would seem would be good for learning slash teaching games but uh such a pain Biggest change, I think, would be creatures don't heal at end step. Oh, you know what would be a big change? Just ta attacking creatures. Yeah, and I think that would be a big one, too. That's a good one. Okay, looks like conversation has changed. We're going to now talk about what rules could we change. A big change is to Magic the Gathering. Who else tried to kill a Tarmogoyf only to see it growing instead of dying? Oh, it's happened to all of us. We all have to learn some way. We all have to learn some way. Yeah, Hearthstone creatures. I don't understand why we can't attack our own creatures. Like, we can, we can attack a Planeswalker. We can attack an opponent. But we can't attack specific creatures. That makes no damn sense. Yeah, removing the cleanup step would be interesting. Just have permanent damage on the creatures. I had no issues learning MTG or Yu-Gi-Oh. I started when I was in my teens for Yu-Gi-Oh and my 20s for MTG. Pokemon, on the other hand, I didn't play right being in the third grade. I've played for five years and still don't understand the... Ba oh, Barry just means destroy without regeneration. Like, what, um... I think Doomblade destroys, right? No, it doesn't. Well, it destroys, but not without regeneration. But that's what bury is. Bury means destroy and no, re you cannot regenerate. <laughs> the Tarmo thing happened yesterday. It has to happen sooner or later. In the past, the player was the Planeswalker. Well, we still are Planeswalkers. We still are Planeswalkers. I would like them to bring back the rule where you can't have two of the same damn planeswalker on the same on the battlefield. Like if you have two Jaces, you can only keep one Jace. You have two Teferis, keep one Teferi. You have two Liliana, you just keep one Liliana. Makes no fl no flavor sense whatsoever. I guess it's Liliana from another another timeline. You know, if they can go back in time, then why why is it, or maybe it actually happens in the story. How often in the story are there two Jaces, like, or like two Teferis in place at the exact same time? We need more horsemanship cards. I love playing them because they always get through. Yeah, like no one, not much horsemanship out there. Old Legend Rule 2. Do you know what? I think the old legend rule makes sense, but it unfortunately is too unfun. Just way too unfun. Like, one person gets the legendary out, and then, like, what, your opponent can't play their legendary of the same card? It seems really stupid. People miss the old legend rule. Oh. Pop. Oh, you want... At what stage of the legendary rules did you like? Because originally, OG, a long time ago, you get your legend out, you get your Gaia's Cradle. Your opponent cannot play a Gaia's Cradle back in the day and it was even more relevant with the Talarian Academy decks <laughs> whoever gets Academy out first basically wins because the legend rule you can't get your own Academy out it's legendary land I'm the only one na 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 Dexter Johnson you never have two of one character in the same play you never you never have two of one character in the same in the same plane okay they haven't gone down that route yet. Where they go back in time to warn to warn themselves. And then they have to go back in time to warn the person who went back in time. They haven't played with that yet. Must be confusing in, in written mode, though. The reason we can have multiple is because they are now considered copies before the creatures were, were supposed to be what you found in the plane you were visiting. The reason you have multiples is because they are now considered copies before the creatures were... I don't... I still don't really get it, though. Magic. Temporal discontinu discontinuity. Coming this fall. Charlie says, I thought... Okay, so here's... Okay, I don't know the, ext the extent of the legend rule, but 
Okay, here's how it works. Originally, the OG rule is I got my legend in play. You cannot play your legend. All right? You cannot do it. This this made I think this made Live Civi banned in some in like block constructed or something. Uh, oops, not Live Civi, Lin Civi. So this was like a really insanely powerful tutoring creature in its time, which was uh, which was legendary. It's a rebel legend, and if you get your Lin Civi out, basically the other person's dead. They they have no chance. Um, but then they changed the rules. I don't know. I so I don't know the exact timeline, but. Uh, and I also don't know the extent of the rule changes, but then there came the rule where if two legends are on the battlefield, they destroy each other. They just, you know, both of them just... No, hold on. There was... How does it work? I think there was a time maybe you even could play a legend, but it would just blow up. And then there came a point where you play... If you get the same legend in play, they both blow up and they're just gone. My friend taught me mono artifact meant I could only have one, uh, and poly artifact meant I could have multiple. Interesting. That would make a lot of sense to me. That would make a lot of sense. Unban Charizard? <laughs> we got a bot in the, yeah, we got them bots in the chat. Mask's block was pretty crappy back then. Uh, so anyway, and then, okay, so we got start off, okay, I got my legend in play, you're not allowed to play a legend, then we both can play legends, and then they, they just blow up, uh, and then what else, what happened later, and that's when Phantasmal Image was, like, really good as a card to kill other legendary creatures, so that was the job of Phantasmal Image, to play a Phantasmal Image to copy a legendary creature, and they both blow up, really good at killing Geist of St. Trafts. And then, and then eventually we had the rule where you can have as many legendaries as you want. But I want to say there's more, there were more rule changes than that. This legend rule thing was changed many times. And then finally by, uh, what's it called? I think it was actually Theros that they finally changed the rule. You can have as many legend as you say, you can, both players can have a legendary of the same card because it's just more fun that way. Oh, yeah, that, that was good. You could play any... So, you didn't even need the same... You didn't even need the same card. So, there's Jace the Mind Sculptor, right? Jace the Mind Sculptor. So, the rule back then also still was you can only have one of any particular Planeswalker on the battlefield. That doesn't make any sense. But, uh, well, I mean, it makes sense. But when you... <laughs> you could then use other Planeswalkers with the same name to destroy the other Planeswalker. Like Jace Bellerin. Use this three mana Jace Bellerin. We're gonna get the Lorwyn one. This was in so many sideboards, and its sole purpose was to destroy Jace the Mind Sculptors. So weird. Mal the Gentleman says, Not a misinterpreted rule, but before I understood card advantage, I thought you were supposed to target your opponent with sign and blood like a burn spell. Whoops. Wow, that is a that is a bad burn spell. I'm building a burn deck. It's full of sign and bloods. Take two damage. Two cards. What's that worth? You're at 18 life. Before you know it, you're going to be dead. Yeah, it was the best time in EDH. Clone saw play to snipe opponent's commanders. Really? Oh, yeah. So that's... Does that mean clone was worth money at one point? It's, worth... it's worthless now. Let's look up clone. Uh, that's an old one. Let's get to a really old one. Let's go... I don't want to go too old. Like, beta is just going to be expensive because it's beta. Uh... Looks like at Theros it was still flat, though. No one cared. What happens when you cast Dress Down as response to Dash Ragavan? Will, will Ragavan return to hand at end of turn? Uh, it. I don't know. 
I think yes. Because they've dashed it and it's already it's already happened. So let's look at Ragavan. You may cast this spell for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and return it and it's returned from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. I think it's still coming back. But I don't know if it gets haste. It gains haste, but then the dress down is gonna make it lose haste. But it's still but the effect of returning it back to hand still is there. I'm I don't know though. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Ragavan is supposed to bounce to hand, but I don't think it does on Magic the Gathering Online. Oh, is it broken? Oh, I see. No, but like it doesn't gain that ability. See, the thing is, KB, it the, the ability of returning it to your hand at the beginning of next end step is not part of Ragavan, like Ragavan's text box. That's just part of the dash ability. But what it did gain was haste. So haste goes on the text box. And therefore, that is something that it can lose. <laughs> I'm severely embarrassed. Thanks, Nikachu. Ah, no problem. Hey, we've all we've all done something embarrassing. I'm trying to think of how I miss how we interpret misinterpreted the rules in magic when I was younger. I don't know though. I can't remember. Using sign and blood to KO someone hits different. Oh, it it definitely does. I say Edgar is like, sorry to derail the conversation a bit, but whatever happened to the Vivian Pod planes bound complex hype? It's gone. It came and it went. I guess, I mean, I'm sure it had some success, but then it just wasn't long lasting. Or maybe not enough people even tried the deck. I mean, I didn't try it. I used to think regenerate meant that when it dies, it comes back from your graveyard. I think that's the flavor of it. But it, it just, it doesn't actually happen. I think a lot of people are in that camp. My friend told me when a creature entered and triggered, then all uh, creatures with the same name would also be triggered. Oh god. What a hell of a mechanic. Oh, on the uh, point with... Yeah, this, this is correct. Dash creates a delayed trigger that causes a bounce. The trigger is separate from the actual creature. Correct. It was an act... Uh, yes, it's a, it is a delayed trigger. Expressive iteration equals my friend didn't know the difference between playing and casting. He said I can't play a land with it. My friend didn't didn't know the difference. Be oh, I see, I see. You know what? <clears throat> that almost makes sense because there are some old cards that got errated from play to cast. So um, your friend could be like, hey, play and cast is the same thing and you can't cast lands. I have a feeling your friend is not an old timer though. They're probably a new timer. We thought that Ravnica bounce lands only bounce if you already had a land in play. The Ravnica bounce lands? You mean like... What Ravnica bounce lands? More spam bots. Evil spam bots. Yeah, go go for it, mods. Get the get the stupid bots. Okay, is there any other stories here? All right, I always I always had the classic. No one knows how to re how regenerate actually works. Where new players would try to put their drudge skeletons into play from the graveyard, but the most egregious one I remember. Oh, I see. So like, oh, that's what you guys were me meant by regenerate. Yeah. Okay. So I thought. I thought you meant like it's supposed to go to the graveyard. You activate regeneration, it goes to the graveyard, then comes back. That makes actually too. It's like so you're looking at it like unearth, right? Where it like go or not exactly? Yeah, like something like unearth. So it goes to the graveyard, then you can pay the mana cost to bring it back from the grave. That makes so much sense. Wow, that makes too much sense. That's exactly how it should work. If it dies, you can pay this activated ability. It comes right back. But the most egregious one I remember is I had a friend that would tap his land where elves and start searching his lot searching his library for a forest 
because they, he thought that's what tap at a green to your mana pool meant. Since this is not... Wizards R&D should be reading this thread because obviously there is a pattern. There is a pattern to uh, people screwing this up. I mean, maybe that's why they kept saying it, your mana pool. Do they say that anymore? Oh, it keeps filling land where elves are wrong. No, they got rid of the mana pool thing. People are going to make the mistake again. Because there was a point where they said, add green to your mana pool. Uh, there we go. I'm sure they d added this to your mana pool to help fix people who are, like, misinterpreting the card. Add a green to your mana pool, not search your deck for a green. Now people are going to make the same mistake all over again. Oh, where's the original? Not the original, the new. They're going to make the same mistake. They're going to search your library for uh, forests and put them directly into the battlefield. Because that's that's all they see. Add a, add a forest. They see a forest picture. Friend thought it was it was return Viashino Sandstalker to hand even if it died. Oh, wow. Just got here. Y'all talk about thinking creatures have to tap to block? No! No, we have not. You're the first guy to uh, propose that. Have to tap to block. So, there's, so that, again, they would be affected by summoning sickness. That does make sense. Oh, you heard, you heard it, people. It's time for deck list review. All right, so if you have a you have a list you want to share with all of us, go into the description. There's a link to my Discord. Uh, join the Discord and then find channel decklist review and enter the command exclamation point review deck space give the URL to your decklist and you'll be eligible at random for decklist review. It's random. We got a lot of people here for decklist review. Meet us! Congratulations, you're the next contestant on De Decklist Review. We got Vampire Prison. Interesting. Alright, so... What do we got here? Oh god, we didn't even mention the sponsors. Hold on. Sponsors! We got sponsors like FusionGamingOnline.com. This is a sick deal of the week this week. Save 15% off all antiquity singles. That is dis that is a disgustingly good deal. So you know if you got you want those OG Mishra's factories transmute artifacts, get a nice black bordered strip mine for yourself. I I can't stand the white bordered strip mines. Those are terrible. You go to FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu though at checkout. Because it, get, it will add an additional 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders. The Mana Traders, the premier place to rent magic cards online. Play any deck of your dreams, especially from Decklist Review. Unlock your creativity when you are renting the cards from Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% uh, off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore WBN. Alright, back to here. What formats do I play? I play Modern. Okay, we got Vampire Prison. All right, so Soren and Pierce, Bloodlord, love it. Karn the Great Creator. All right, I'm 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 listening. I'm listening. I like a Karn the Great Creator. Knight of Ebon Legion only has a one of Vasir Siro, uh, Blood Artist, Blood Gast, Calastria Highborn. Okay, Silver Smoke Ghoul and Chalice of the Void. I don't know if Chal how well Chalice works. Do you have? Okay, you have the old the Cavern of Souls. That's how it's going to work. So you had like quite a few one drops. I'm like Chalice in this deck. And you got Blood Moon. You have red specifically for this. But that's going to conflict with your Cavern of Souls, right? You don't have that many double black creatures, so it's not too bad. You could even try to probably discard this Blood Gas somehow. And by somehow, I don't know. Two Black Cleave Cliffs, four Bloodstained Mire, four Cavern of Souls, one Mountain. Uh, your Mountain is probably unnecessary, because if you play Blood Moon, I mean, what do you need a basic Mountain for? Eleven Swamp, one Urborg. Four blood yeah, I think four Bloodstained Mire, eleven Swamp will be enough for you to play your Blood Moon. One Alpine Moon, one Heat Knee Hole Spellbomb, four Thoughtseize, Demonic Whip, or sorry, Demon, Demon Spine Whip. Creature that gets plus X plus zero until end of turn. This card sucks. Get rid of it. 
Lightning Greaves. Seems unnecessary. What are you trying to protect? I don't know what you want to protect. You don't have anything worth protecting. They all, they, they like a lot of these guys, like blood, sorry, blood gas dies and it comes back, or you want to protect your blood artist. Anyway, liquid metal coating, uh, torpor orb, unlicensed hearse, ensnaring bridge for lane lane of sanctity. You should have at least one creature in here. It's so like when you have your Karn and you lock out your opponent. So I would say get rid of the lightning greaves, get rid of the demon spine whip. Put, I don't know, a walking ballista and then some other creature. I mean, this is a creature, but like get a flying artifact creature and that would probably be good enough. Fetchland is not tapping for red without without the mountain. I don't get it. Never mind. Yeah, I think you can cut the mountain for a marsh flats. Maybe another fetch land. Like a mountain is very unnecessary. And it, you, under rare, you're like almost never going for a mountain anyway. Like you don't need that many. Like you only basically play blood moon. Sometimes you want to, you crack your fetch and you'd like to go get yourself uh, untapped. Hold on. Is there even a single blood crypt? I think you need a blood crypt. Okay, get rid of the mountain. Put a blood crypt in here. How many red sources do you have? Two black cleave cliffs, four bloodstained mire. So you have five, six, seven. Oh, you have no red sources. You need more fetch lands. He isn't running mountain dual lands, so he can't search for a mountain is what he's saying. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so re remove the map. First off, we should just have more blood crypts in this deck. We should have mountain, maybe remove three. Okay, how many, how many, how many red sources do we need by turn three? Frank Karsten. How many mana sources? How, how 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 many mana sources do we need to get Blood Moon on in play by turn three? I need a single color Goblin Rival Master. We need eleven. Okay, we need eleven red sources. So two six. Okay, remove the Urborg or remove one Cavernous Souls. Add a fetch land and then remove three swamps in the mountain and add blood crypts. This is very this is a high cost for just this mountain. I don't think it's worth it, but whatever. If you want to protect uh, blood artists, maybe Malachar Rebirth. That's possible. Why no blood crypts? I don't know. They forgot about it. They're one of those people that are like, ah, who needs who needs a mana base? I got Vasira Seer. Eh, who needs a mana base? And I mean, I mean, maybe you don't need Blood Moon by turn three, but I think Blood Moon would be worth a lot more if you can play it by turn three. Yeah, definitely need the Blood Crypt. Get rid of the Lightning Greaves and the Demon's, uh, Demon Spine Whip. Add Walking Ballista and uh, some other big artifact creature to help close out the game. And thank you for submitting your deck list. All right, we got Baby Cow. Baby Cow, welcome to deck list review. It's a fresh name. All right, we got a commander deck. All right, here's the rules for a commander deck. I'm offering you no advice. Read the chat as they say things. Your commander is Omnath. Oh my god, you can't escape Omnath anywhere in this economy. All right, here we go. Soul Ring, Lightning Greaves, Expedition Map, Crucible of Worlds, Chromatic Lantern, Arcane Signet, Amulet of Vigor. This, this, set, this deck is bringing the pain. Vorinclex Voice uh, Hunger, Tireless Tracker, Tatiova Benth uh, Benthic Druid. Uh, I, I'm liking this deck a little bit more already. Tarmogoyf. I thought Tarmogoyf sucks in Commander. It's like two mana, a big creature, that's it. You gotta do better than that in Commander. Sun Titan, Scaled Herbalist, Royal Elemental, Romanap Excavator, Ra Rampaging Baloths. Baylos with an S. A lot of Baylos in that picture. Rada, Heart of the Keld. Felath, World Sculptor. 
Omnath, Locus of Rage. Two Omnaths in the same deck. Omnath, Locus of Mana. Omnath, Tribal. Noble Hierarch. Meloku, a Clouded Mirror. I like this card a lot. This is a, this is a fun card. Lotus Cobra, also a fun card. And I don't and, and probably survives more often in Commander because no one wants to play spot removal. Who the hell wants to play like Lightning Bolt and Fatal Push in this format? Hedron Crab. Uh, makes no sense to me, but maybe it will later. Emeria Shepherd. Elish Norn. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Cultivator Colossus. Corsair of Crufix. Blightsteel Colossus. Birds of Paradise. Azusa Lost But Seeking. Avenger of Zendikar. I thought that was banned. Or was it a different card? Okay. I'm thinking of something else. There's something that costs a lot of mana that is banned. Okay, so I'm wrong. Uh, Augur of Autumn, uh, Ashaya, Soul of the Soul of the Wild. Okay, and the more cre uh, more. Oh, we are in the enchantments. Zendikar's Royal, Zendikar Resurgence, Trade Routes, Teamer Ascendancy. Oh, I love this card. Nice. I love this one. I actually should try this in my Stompy deck, because when a creature enters the battlefield, you draw the card. And that's worth a lot! That's not nothing. That keeps the gas coming through the hand, you know what I mean. That's a good one. I actually really should playtest this in Modern in the Stompy deck. Smothering Tithe. I heard that card is just beyond broken. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two, which they won't, of course, because they don't even pay one for Ristic Study. If the player doesn't, you create a, tre a colorless treasure artifact token with tap, a sac sacrifice this artifact at one mana of any color. So basically, you get a black lotus every turn. Is this a damn stupid fucking different bot or something? Um... Anyway, Team or Ascendancy, Smothering Tithe, Rhythm of the Wild. So, hold on. Smothering Tithe says, basically, you get a Black Lotus every turn. Add your upkeep, put a Black Lotus in play. Because you get a, you're going to get a Lotus Petal for each person, and then with all the Lotus Petals together, you create the Black Lotus. Rhythm of the Wild. Ooh, so you got both of them. Rhythm of the Wild and Team or Ascendancy. Ristic Study. Retreat to Kazandu. Retreat to Ameria. You're retreating! Mirari's Wake, Exploration, Burgen Bur Burgening, Burgening, I don't know, whenever a, an opponent plays a land, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Sounds sort of broken. Balakut Awakening, Swords of Plowshare, Silence, Growth Spiral, Generous Gift, Aladdin Reese Call, Dovin's Veto, and Brainstorm! Yeah, we've got to bolt the bots. I know we have a spam bot, I saw it. It was terrible. Brief looking at the land, you got the Ottawar and the Oboro in here. Mystic Sanctuary, which is, I guess it's useful. Use it for that Brainstorm. You got a Field of Ruin and field, uh, field of the Dead. I was about to say, why isn't there Primeval Titan in this deck? And Primeval Titan is definitely banned. Alright, so what are your suggestions? You need to play Ashaya and Quiron Ranger for infinite landfall triggers. Same happens with Kodama of the East Tree and a bounce land and any landfall token trigger, uh, token generator. I'll keep repeating, but Undiscovered Paradise is great for landfall decks. Suggestion, where is the land ramp for landfall? Far seek rampant growth, nature's lore. I think you probably could use some more landfall triggers. I think there's like cards like Exploration and also Burgeoning also helps with landfall triggers. Counter spells aren't worth running unless you run enough consistently uh, have one when you need one. Well, I mean, there is the, what's it called? The... There is Mystic Sanctuary in here. You could probably draw it too. I mean, I don't know exactly how this deck works. Titania would be amazing. Suggestion, play another commander. You will be targeted immediately. <laughs> My commander is Omnath. All right, everyone, go get him.
Look, ZG, everyone like everyone likes Commander. And you, there's quite a few that slipped through the cracks here. And a lot of people like giving Commander uh, feedback. Yes, yeah, Scoot Swarm. So four color money pile for Commander. Yeah, basically. What is the cost of this deck? How much does this deck cost? Does it say anywhere? What well, says in the piles? This pile is twelve dollars. This pile is three hundred. This is one hundred sixty-nine dollars. This is two hundred eighty-three dollars. This is one hundred five dollars. Actually, it's funny. I think this is going to be cheaper than a modern deck because the modern money pile Omnath deck is like a thousand seven hundred. It's crazy. It says at the top it's a thousand dollar deck. Oh, it is. Yeah, thousand bucks. It's actually cheaper than modern. It's cheaper to play Om 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 Omnath in Commander than it is in modern. It says at the top. Everyone's voicing up for it. Are element are the elementals legal in Commander? Of course. Commander plays anything. Commander is like more unhinged than Legacy. That's how unhinged like Commander is. It's crazy. All right, anyway, that's going to be it for deck list review. Thanks, everyone, for submitting your deck list, but also showing up today. We do this Monday to Friday, 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. You want to send me something? Here's my P.O. Box. Well, I'll open it up on stream. Thanks, everyone, for supporting the channel. I really appreciate everybody's support, but, of course, the most important thing is you show up every day and make this day worthwhile. Starting the day off right with a cup of coffee and magic. So keep brewing up those coffees and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next cup.